Nike has made some weird shoes, I mean some really crazy out there concepts, but honestly, this might be one of the wildest. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the upcoming Nike Air Max Scorpion. So before we get into all of the wild and weirdness that is the Nike Air Max Scorpion, let's first talk about how you can grab a pair of these for yourself. The Nike Air Max Scorpion has an official US release date of October 5th, 2022, and a surprisingly high retail price of $250. And if you'd like to grab one of the weirdest shoes I've ever reviewed on this channel, make sure to click that affiliate link in the top of the description below. But right off the bat, while this shoe shares a lot of the design elements from previous Nike Air Max sneakers, there's some noticeable differences and some things that really make this shoe stand out from any of the previous Air Maxes or even Vapor Maxes. I mean, first off, you can see through the midsole of this shoe, the air unit is actually separated from the upper of this shoe by these like stilts or like these feet. It's such a weird design and it really makes the shoe feel a lot different on foot than I was expecting. I mean, genuinely, I was really looking forward to this shoe because of its wild and insane look. And I was honestly expecting a lot of crazy comfort, but unfortunately in the comfort department, it does kind of disappoint. Which I mean, let's be real, is surprising when you look at the size of this midsole unit and this air bubble, it's crazy. It's like the thickest and largest air bubble I've ever seen. I mean, at least on like a Nike sneaker. I'm sure I've seen larger bubbles of air somewhere else in the world, like a hot air balloon or something. But hey, with that being said, I kind of expected this shoe to feel like you were standing on a hot air balloon, like it would kind of softly caress you into the next step, but that's not what happens. But before we dive into that, let's first take a look at the box because Nike is doing something pretty different for the packaging of this shoe. So if you do end up ordering a pair of these from Nike, on the sneakers app when it does officially release, you might be surprised to find out that the shoes literally come shipped in this box. Now, in my case, I didn't get them in this box. I got them packed in a second box because I ordered these shoes from GOAT. But if you order them directly from Nike, the packaging is just this, and this also doubles as a sneakers box. Hopefully it doesn't get wet because that's literally the shoe box. You are shipping the shoes in the shoe box, which is something that a lot of resellers don't like to do. I don't like when I receive shoes in just the shoe box, but hey, that's Nike's new strategy to reduce waste, which let's be honest, is probably not a bad idea, and I'm sure it saves them a bunch of money. In fact, inside the box, you have this little paragraph that's printed on the top in white that says, we're working to ditch the double box and ship shoes in a single shoe box made with at least 90% recycled content. And while yes, I love the fact that they're using recycled content for these boxes, and honestly saving a lot of cardboard by not shipping two boxes, as a sneakerhead and someone who enjoys my sneakers to be in the best condition possible, I would have preferred them to ship it in double boxes. But hey, that's something that I feel like in the future is just gonna go by the wayside for a lot of reasons. Honestly, probably mostly because they save a bunch of money just shipping the shoes in one box. And I'm sure for most people buying these shoes or just standard Air Maxes in general, they're not planning to keep the box, so it does make sense when it comes to a more GR sneaker like this. However, when it comes to limited sneakers like Air Jordan 1s or maybe the latest Travis Scott's, I'm sure they're going to continue shipping those shoes in double boxes because that's part of the appeal, having a collector's item. As I mentioned before, the outside of the box is pretty much completely unmarked other than this barcode. However, on the front of the box, you do have the size tag. Now, I don't know if the size tag will be on the outside of the box if I buy a shoe directly from Nike or if this is just a pair that was supposed to go to a store and maybe the store sold it to goat I'm not 100% sure but if they do plan to ship the shoes with the size tag on the outside of the box that does kind of suck because it literally tells people what's inside the box down to the size and the colorway speaking of the colorway the official colorway of this shoe is phantom black light cream and this is officially the Nike Air Max Scorpion FK or Flynet or as I've heard people say the Nike Air Max Scorpion foot but interesting packaging decisions aside let's get back into the sneakers themselves which are also pretty interesting so some interesting little tidbits about this shoe that you may not have known and you might not even care about, but this shoe was designed completely and entirely during the COVID-19 lockdown. Also, very interestingly, this shoe was designed using advanced concepts like 3D VR design, which if you guys haven't seen, it's pretty incredible. You throw on a VR headset and you can literally sculpt the shoe in 3D. So I think it's safe to say that there were a lot of firsts with this shoe, which I think is both a good thing and possibly a bad thing. Now, right off the bat, I've got to say, aesthetically, I love the way this sneaker looks. This is the reason why I was so excited about this shoe, because of how absolutely insane this sneaker looks. I mean, look at the heel of the shoe. Look how fat this air bubble is in the back. It's crazy. It's absolutely insane, but it looks awesome. All right, I understand that it might not be for everybody, but for me, someone who loves weird looking sneakers, this is right up my alley. Now, as you can see, the design of this shoe is absolutely new and fresh. However, there is some definite inspiration from previous Nike models like the Vapormax. And what's always bothered me about the Vapormax line is how that line was specifically designed to be a performance running line, but when you actually ran in the shoes, you noticed that the shoes were very unstable on foot and also not that comfortable, especially when you were running. So it's interesting to me that not only are they continuing with this airline, which I understand is a big part of Nike's history and a big part of Nike's past, but they're also pushing this sort of performance aspect of it. Now, while 
the shoe is not specifically said to be a running sneaker or even an exercise sneaker, it definitely has that athletic vibe and it seems like the kind of shoe that you would probably exercise in or even run in. And actually, while preparing for this review, I did run in this shoe to find out if it was something that you could actually run in. And I'm happy to report that it's actually a lot more stable than the Nike Vapormax, probably because of that st booty going on in the heel. But I'll get more into this crazy air unit and how it feels underfoot later on in the video. Let's dive into the upper of the shoe first and find out what makes up the top half of the Nike Air Max Scorpion. So as you probably got from the name of this sneaker, the Nike Air Max Scorpion FK features an almost entirely fly knit upper. So I'm sure by now if you've followed Nike for a while or have worn Nike sneakers, you're probably familiar with Nike fly knit. It's a knit technology that Nike's been using for years. They've slightly changed it and iterated upon it over the last couple years, but texture and feel wise, the Flyknit used on the Nike Air Max Scorpion is pretty similar to every other Nike Flyknit shoe. It's pretty soft and pretty stretchy. It's also very lightweight and very breathable, so it makes sense why they use this Flyknit technology on their running sneakers. And on the Nike Air Max Scorpion, this Flyknit feels very similar to all of the Flyknit that we're used to from previous models, which is honestly a good thing. I've always liked Flyknit. I don't think it's as soft as something like Adidas' Primeknit. However, because it's a little bit stiffer, it does offer a bit more structure in the upper of the shoe, which I think people prefer. Also, if you're trying to enhance the comfort of the shoe, you can grab a pair of socks from my sock brand Apothecary. Our socks are crazy comfortable, they look great with your sneakers, and they come in a ton of different colors and styles. So if you guys want to check out my sock brand Apothecary, there's a link to do so in the top of the description below. As you can see on this lemon wash colorway or phantom colorway, the upper of this shoe comes in this nice sort of off-white or light cream color, which is actually my favorite color that I've seen on a pair of Nike Air Max Scorpions. We've seen like four or five colorways before the official release of this shoe, and this one is by far my favorite. Now this is probably the colorway that will show dirt the quickest because it is the lightest colorway. However, I love the way that this cream color accents the yellow on the midsole of the shoe, or I guess it's the other way around, the yellow accents the cream color. And I just think it's an all around really good looking colorway on a pretty interesting looking shoe. Running around the bottom of the toe and actually completely surrounding the entire bottom half of the upper, you have this sort of felt feeling fuse overlay, which I'm assuming is a way of adding some sort of mud guard protection to the bottom half of the shoe. Nike is probably guessing that this part of the shoe is gonna be a high wear area of the shoe, or maybe it needs a little bit of extra support, so that's why they're doing that, but either way, it's a nice detail and it gives the shoe a little bit more quiet dimension. As you move up from the toe of the sneaker, you get to this vertically oriented Nike swoosh, which is kind of cool, and then next to that on the eye stays of the shoe, and actually continuing all the way up to the tongue, the flyknit actually changes from its standard flyknit texture to a much more chenille feeling fabric texture. Now from what I can tell, it does seem like the chenille feeling area is still flyknit, like it's the same material, it just has a different surface texture, which makes sense, I'm sure it'd be pretty difficult to actually weave in chenille fabric with flyknit, I don't think there'd be an easy thing to do at all, but I've got to say that I absolutely love this texture change. It's subtle, it's different, it's not something that I've ever seen on a pair of Nike Air Max sneakers before, and I think it really adds a nice touch to this shoe. As you may have already spotted, this shoe features a flywire lacing system, which is something that Nike's been using for years. Essentially, it's these little wires that kind of go all the way throughout the entire upper of the shoe, and then you weave the laces through the loops at the end, so when you tighten the shoe, it actually brings the entire upper of the shoe together. It's a really innovative lacing technology that seems to be working for Nike, because like I said, they've been using it for years. However, the one downside to this technology is that because these wires are so thin, if you have one of these wires kind of pop back into the upper of the shoe, it's almost impossible to get that wire out of the knit material. It happened to the other side of the pair of this shoe. It's actually the first time I've ever had that problem happen to me, and I could not get the second wire to come out of the flyknit upper. It's kind of lost forever at this point, which sucks, but as you may be able to see, there's like two wires for each lace loop, so it's not the end of the world. It just kind of sucks. Speaking of the laces, the shoe comes with these thin cream-colored rope laces which look nice, and then underneath the laces you've got the same sort of chenille material on the tongue of the shoe, which seems to be semi-attached, like it's attached to the upper of the shoe about halfway down, but the top half of the tongue is completely separate. And I've gotta say, I like how oversized the tongue is. It seems like it's ever so slightly too big for the shoe, but it makes the shoe look a lot cooler in my opinion. I can't really describe it, I just like big tongues on sneakers. Maybe it's weird, maybe it's just because I like Air Jordan 5s, I don't know, but it definitely gives the shoe a very unique look, which I really like. Running down the center of the tongue, you've got this little rubber branding hit that says Air Max in these black circular little bubble things and then moving inside the sneaker there's not much in the way of padding around the heel there is a little tiny bit around the top of the ankle area in the back of the shoe but other than that your foot is pretty much just up against raw fly knit but then rounding off the inside of the shoe you've got this bright yellow insole with the Nike swoosh pinwheel printed on the heel which usually means that this shoe features some kind of recycled materials but now let's get to sizing and fit and the good news is as with most other Nike sneakers this shoe does fit pretty much true to size now I will say that this shoe does seem to run a little bit narrow maybe that's exciting accentuated by this huge heel area, but I have pretty narrow feet and it felt pretty much true to size exactly on my feet. So if you have wider feet, you might want to try maybe going 
up half a size, but because it's a knit upper, you should be okay going true to size, even if you have wider feet. I would just suggest if you have the chance to try this shoe on first before you buy it, make sure to do that to make sure the sizing is right for you. Or if you want to compare it to another shoe in your collection, the upper of this shoe does feel pretty similar to a pair of Nike Vapor Maxes. Continuing back in the shoe, you've got this black embroidered Nike swoosh that comes in this sort of linear pattern, which I actually really like. Kind of looks like fingerprints. It goes exactly opposite of some of the other lines going vertically on the midfoot of this shoe. I think it's a nice touch. It's nice to see on a $250 pair of shoes that Nike didn't just phone it in and put on some sort of fuse overlay, which I'm sure would have been very fast and very cheap. And instead, they actually embroidered in the Nike swoosh over top of the fuse overlay in the bottom of the shoe, which I'm sure was a lot more expensive and more time consuming. Then moving around to the heel of the shoe, you've got this yellow pull tab with the Nike text made up of the same black dots that you find on the tongue of the sneaker. Then moving down on the shoe, we get to the wildest part of the entire shoe, and by far the most interesting part of the entire shoe, and that's this crazy air midsole. So even though the main part of the midsole that draws your attention is the air unit, that's really only half of the midsole. The top half of the midsole is actually completely different. In fact, the top half of the midsole is almost like a set of pillars that keep your feet off of the air unit, so you don't actually have any direct contact with the air units themselves. So this plastic piece right below the midsole is actually just an exterior piece that wraps all the way around the shoe and almost gives the shoe the look of having cleats underneath it, which is kind of weird. Cleats on top of the air unit, which is even weirder. It's a pretty stiff plastic or TPU material, and it has this very interesting matte finish to it that almost gives it this kind of rubbery texture. Now, what I didn't realize until I got this shoe in hand is that this sort of stiff TPU material is only on the outside of the shoe. Inside the shoe, that yellow area isn't actually TPU or plastic. Instead, it's a foam. But the foam doesn't really make that much contact with the air unit, so it's kind of just glued to the bottom of the underside of your foot or the bottom of the footbed, and it doesn't really make contact with anything, so it doesn't really give you a foamy, soft cushion. It honestly kind of seems like it's not doing anything, like it's just kind of floating there for no reason, and I'm not sure exactly why they added that detail. And what's even weirder is that underneath the foam in most places, and on top of the air unit, there's just this gap of air, like you can see through the entire midsole of the shoe, and it never really compresses in that point because of this stiff TPU. So it's really weird to me because it seems like they're really just suspending your entire foot off of the air unit and using foam as, I, I guess, a cushion, but it doesn't really do anything because it doesn't compress because it doesn't really make any contact with anything else. So it, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me but it adds a nice color to the shoe. Maybe that's why they did it, because it was a cheap way to add color to the midsole of the shoe. I have no idea. Now, I'm sure there's a technical reason why they did this. I'm sure they didn't just do this for aesthetics. I'm sure there is a reason why they built this midsole this way, and it's supposed to enhance something about the performance of the shoe. I just don't know what that could possibly be. But then we move down even further on the midsole to the air unit, the most eye-catching part of the shoe. And I've got to say, it is absolutely the part of the shoe that drew me to this sneaker design the most. I love the way it looks. I love how crazy it looks. But functionally, it doesn't do too much. Well, okay, maybe that's an exaggeration. It does feel a lot like a pair of Air Max 720s, except with less bounce and less give, because your foot is not making direct contact with this air unit. Instead, you're making like limited contact points through these TPU pillars or TPU cleat style things, which I don't understand why they did it that way, but they did. And uh, it's odd, it's very weird. When you look at the outsole of the shoe, you can see how the air unit is segmented. From what I can tell, it does seem like it's one entire air unit, which is kind of crazy, but it's got all these little like pods that are all connected through this one line of, I guess, air. And it gives the shoe a very cool and unique look, like I mentioned. It's definitely a design that's been inspired by the Vapormax. And honestly, I would be really interested to see how the shoe felt if your foot was directly on top of these air units, like it is with the Vapormaxes or other shoes like the 720s. And then also in another weird touch, all of these air units are held together by this plate. It kind of rests in the middle of the air unit that I guess acts as a spring plate or something like that. It makes the shoe very stiff and it doesn't really bend in either direction like this. And it also is separated from this upper part of the midsole, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. It does look like when you look through this clear plate that the foam does make some contact with this plate on the heel, in the midfoot, and then in the toe of the shoe, but that's about it. So I still think the foam doesn't do too, too much. And I'm gonna be 100% honest, I, I don't know why they did the shoe like this. I think it looks really cool, but technically it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I wish Nike had just come out and said what that reason was, or at least been more clear about what that reason was, but I don't understand it. And I could tell you from wearing the shoe for a couple days, it doesn't feel that incredible underfoot. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting the shoe to feel as stiff as it does underfoot. Like it feels stiffer than Vapor Max's, which is already a 
pretty stiff cushion underfoot when compared to foam. But I mean, it's very, very stiff underfoot, and I'm assuming that's because of the way that this midsole is set up. Your foot just does not make contact with these air units, and because of that, you just don't get the compression that I think you would get if your foot did make contact with it. Now again, I'm sure these pillars are making contact with the air unit in specific points so that it does compress in the way that Nike wants, but it just doesn't feel that soft underfoot. Like I was expecting a much softer, much cushier ride, but instead you get a relatively stiff ride that while yes, it does absolutely spring you into the next step, and there is a lot of energy return, which I guess is what they were going for, it just does not feel anywhere close to what I was expecting. I guess what I was hoping for was a softer version of the Air Max 720s, but instead what we got was an experience that's similar to that, but a little bit stiffer, but a little bit more springy, which I guess is a good thing, but different. I don't know. It's weird. Now I do want to go back to my experience running in this shoe because I did run a couple miles in this shoe and I've got to say that overall it wasn't bad. This shoe does offer a very springy energy return and it kind of felt like I was running on a trampoline in this shoe which is weird. I felt that before in other Nike sneakers but this one definitely had a bouncier vibe which I guess for some people is good. For other people it might be a little bit too much and I noticed that I wasn't as tired as I usually am after a short run and I guess that's because the shoe was doing a lot of the work which if you're trying to exercise in a pair of shoes I don't know if that's exactly the feeling that you want but at the same time, maybe if you're trying to recover or have a not too grueling run, this is not a bad way to go. And it did genuinely feel a lot more stable because of this heel area. However, I was running in the rain and I did slip a little bit because the grip on this shoe isn't incredible. So that's something to keep in mind. But overall, a decent running experience. But is this a shoe that I would take over my regular running sneakers? Probably not. It just felt, it felt a little bit too top heavy. Like I felt like I was riding too high off the ground in a way that didn't feel unstable, but felt kind of unnerving. Like it didn't feel right. But again, I'm not sure if this shoe is specifically designed for running or if it's more of a lifestyle sneaker, which is what I would assume. But I will say you can run in this shoe. It does offer a unique experience. It's one that I enjoyed, but one that I probably wouldn't go back to every single day. So comfort wise, the Nike Air Max Scorpion was different than I expected. I was expecting a soft, cushy ride, but what I got instead was a much bouncier and much more trampoline like ride, which actually is probably exactly what they were going for. So maybe my expectations were just off about the way that I was hoping that this shoe should feel underfoot. Obviously, it doesn't feel the way that I was hoping. I was expecting more of a foam-like experience, which I understand might have been stupid to expect because it's an air unit, but I felt air units that have felt softer underfoot than this, and that's what I was hoping for. So, I don't know. Either way, it's a unique underfoot experience. If you want a trampoline-like feel, this is probably one of the most trampoline-y style shoes that you can grab. It is going to give you an extra two inches of height at least. I'm right around 5'11", so this may be more like 6'1", which I, I did kind of like, I'm not gonna lie. But it's not a shoe that I would wear every single day because the experience underfoot, while enjoyable in small spurts, is definitely one that I found my feet getting kind of tired of over a couple hours. That happened to me a little bit in the Vapor Maxes as well, so it's possible that maybe just I don't have the right feet <laughs> for Vapor Max or Air style sneakers. I mean, the Vapor Max is one of Nike's best selling sneakers, so maybe I'm not the best person to review Vapor Max shoes, but I'm just giving you my personal experience. I think it's a good shoe overall. I love the way that this shoe looks, but comfort wise, not exactly what I expected, but not bad. But hey, I would love to know your thoughts on this shoe in the comment section down below.